All right, so it's been a while since I've done one of these, kind of in a good old vloggity vlog style, and uh, let's get to it. <laughs> it never gets old. I still do feel bad for my neighbors on the cold start though. It is obnoxiously loud. What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Here we are in my 2018 Mustang GT, also nicknamed Sub-Zero. The original idea for me to call it Sub-Zero was because I was originally going to wrap this blue, like the Mortal Kombat character. But then I did everything I did, and I left it Oxford white because it just looked too good. But white, snow, eh. <laughs> So right now the car has 56,270, oh wait, it just changed, 56,280 miles. So roughly 45,000 miles since I purchased the car. <laughs> just going to work. It's cold outside. <laughs> the car I got with only 11,000 miles on it, I found it in the middle of nowhere, North Carolina, and I got it for an absolute steal. It's got the heated and cool seats, Apple CarPlay, the digital dash, all that good stuff. I do also think it's very important to add that this is my daily driver. I drive it almost every single day, and it has 750 wheel horsepower on 93 octane pump gas. <laughs> many people who aren't into Mustangs, um, you're probably not gonna believe me when I tell you that the motor has never been open, it's bone stock. The transmission has never been open, it's bone stock. Differential, never been open, it's bone stock. The entire rest of the car, except Fortunato 510 coilovers, is stock. I also have Nitto tires and RTR wheels, which I'll get to in a little bit, but everything else about this car is aesthetic. So how did I get the 750 horsepower, you might ask? Well, I went up to National Speed up in Virginia, and National Speed did one of their kits with the VMP Odin. The VMP Odin supercharger is an absolute powerhouse, and it's actually pretty easy to install, and it looks pretty OEM. So when you pop the hood to the untrained eye with the reservoirs looking stock and everything, Thing, it's it's pretty sneaky so from the 11,000 miles to now how is the car done so first I'll tell you what I did to the car first and got it to it now but first a quick word from our sponsor today it's not easy being a car guy and working on cars and that's why I want to thank today's sponsor mechanic superstore for sponsoring today's video mechanic superstore has a deluxe starter combo which will help you if you're trying to start your own automotive business or just have everything ready to go and you can get all of this at mechanic superstore as a one-stop shop but one of the best things about mechanic superstore is their four post lifts you'll never make friends faster in the automotive world than buying a lift <laughs> it's way better not to be on your back anymore and also makes storing cars easier as well without having to play musical cards with multiple projects. And finally, you don't need to borrow a lift from a friend or rely on somebody else at their shop. And the Triumph series of lifts from Mechanic Superstore are affordable, reliable, and safe. And they're designed for a ton of different vehicles from cars, trucks, SUVs, you name it. And it's also an incredible bang for your buck. And if you're new to using equipment like this, Mechanic Superstore has you covered. They take customer service very seriously. Mechanic Superstore offers knowledgeable customer support with only a phone call or text message away. And they also offer hassle-free installation. And they also have their Synchrony Car Care financing option at 12 months with 0% interest. And they also have SLS long-term financing. For those larger orders or payments, you can take some stress off, make the payments towards the equipment on a long term, all with no credit check required. So for your lifts, tire machines, compressors, anything you need in your garage, Mechanic Superstore has got you covered. So make sure to head over to Mechanic Superstore and get $75 off your first purchase with Gear Up 75. And also $100 off for military with Salute 100. All right, we're back. The first thing I did was mostly aesthetic stuff. 
I took out the taillights that were the USDM ones. I put the Euro ones in, that which are clear. I think they look a million times better. I then did a wing, a Magnaflow competition exhaust. I also did some mods with the front bumper. Yes, this is still the factory bumper. It's just modified with different grills and then the front lip as well. I then went to VMP Performance, did an intake and a tune along with a ported intake manifold and the car made 475 wheel horsepower and this thing was a rocket ship with 475 wheel through the 10 speed automatic. In an undisclosed location, uh, in an undisclosed time, I found out that this car was faster than basically a port and polished heads and cammed C5 Z06, which was lighter, and this just ran away. No problem. It also beat a 530 horsepower Terminator. It beat a whole bunch of stuff. I'll just say that. And I was really surprised. So even then, I really enjoyed the car. I liked the setup of the car then. But then I got the amazing opportunity with National Speed to build the car out to what it is now. First, we did the Loki kit, which is the stock headers, but with the VMP Odin blower. The Loki kit also utilizes the factory airbox, believe it or not. And it still made like 630 wheel horsepower. Oh my God. Then after that, I did the Odin kit the next day, which is just stainless works lawn tube headers and an air box by AFE. And that got this car with just those mods to 750 wheel horsepower. Holy freaking smokes. This is so stupid. more of like a hot boy stance setup at the time. Aluminum brushed wheels, really low to the ground. And then I had the opportunity to go work with RTR, also known as Ready to Rock, Von Gittin Jr.'s company. Went up there, toured the RTR lab, and did some really cool stuff with them up there. So I switched over to Nitto tires, went to RTR wheels. These are 20s rather than the 19s. And also did the RTR front grill with the lights up front and RTR front lip. Oh yeah. That's so amazing. The only bad thing is, is that when you drive this thing around and you wanna be, well, stupid, you're loud. You're not sneaking anything in this car at all. You can't sneak a single thing. <laughs> That's what I mean, like, the world's gonna know. It's a loud car, it's a loud exhaust. I could quiet up the exhaust with Magnaflow's XMOD system. You can actually change different sounds out with these discs um, to either make it louder or quieter. Now the big question I'm getting lately is, David, would you trade your S550 in for an S650? As of right now, no. And it's not because the S650 is a bad car. The thing is, is the jump between the S197 and the S550 was so massive that it's much harder to feel the differences in the S550 to the S650 other than the interior. The interior in the S650 is superior. It does handle a little bit better. It does things better than the S550. However, tuning is not unlocked yet because the ECU is locked. See, with the S550, I can still tune it, I can still data log it, I can still do all the things I want with my 750 horsepower car. I can't do that with the S650 right now. People are doing really good drag times with the S650, um, yeah, but they're buddy. still on the stock too. You know what I mean? On this, if I need to solve an issue, if I need to plug in my laptop, I can go in there and change what I need to change. So the potential of the S650 to me isn't there yet. And I'm somebody who loves modifying Mustangs. And as of right now, the S650 one is way more expensive. I also did this inboard dash for the passenger to see exactly what was going on. And it actually has worked very well. I thought it would be extraordinarily distracting but it really hasn't been that distracting. After about a day of driving with it, it didn't bother me at all. Plus you can turn it off if you really want to. 
I actually took it up to Ford Fest recently. I did some autocross with it. And that road trip was about five and a half hours. I've also taken this thing on a bunch of different road trips, all the way down to the Adam LZ compound. I've been to the Circle of Drift podcast a couple times. That was about four hours and change. I drove it all the way back from national speed when the supercharger kit was done. So this thing with the miles, it's earned miles. It's not just like I'm just city driving. I'm taking big long road trips because I have so much faith in the car itself. The 10 speed though, with this much power, it is much better to manually shift the gears, at least at first, to give the car what you want. If you try to kind of just like get on it wherever, it definitely does not like that. It basically just gets a little confused. It's like, oh my God, what's going on? What do you want from me? There's a bunch of different modes, like sport mode and track mode and drag mode. Sport mode seems to be the happiest equal medium with this car with this blower setup. And also the 10 speed automatic has a sport mode setting. If you're using the paddles, it won't automatically shift for you. You can control what gear it's in and shift on demand. The Fortunato coilovers have also done an amazing job. It made this car feel a hundred times better up in the mountains. I absolutely love taking this car up to the mountains. I know that sounds pretty crazy. It handles pretty decently. It drives really fun and it gets the job done. When it comes to mechanical failure of the car, I've only had one weird issue with the car, and that's something called math wash. What math wash tends to be is that there's so much turbulent air coming into the grill with the supercharged setup that the factory ECU, which is an extraordinarily smart ECU, yes, I'm still in the factory ECU, literally goes, what is going on? And so if you're not like perfectly up to temperature or there's so much air coming in, if you're going down a hill a certain way and you're accelerating, sometimes you'll get like this flashing check engine light and that can be pretty scary, but it's really not that big of a deal once you data log it. It's basically just like, hey, we don't know what's going on. So then I added kind of a block off plate to kind of channel the air in a different way in the front grill. And that actually helped with the problem quite a bit. It's a much more rare problem to have than it used to be. So once in a blue moon, that would happen, but pretty much resolved by now. I've had an amazing time with the car. It's been a ton of fun. I don't have many issues with it. It has done its job extraordinarily well. In life, it's good to have a car that's always an experience every time you get on it. And this one absolutely delivers on that promise. On that note, what do you guys think about my 2018 Mustang GT? Put it down in the comment section below. And on that note, I typically upload on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays, and I will see you guys next time. Take it easy, have a wonderful day. Goodbye.